In this lecture, we're going to talk about constraint satisfaction problems. We're given a set of variables, domain for each variable, the set of possible values, and we want to assign a value to each variable that satisfies typically hard constraints. It's what I'll often mean when I say constraint satisfaction. I'll mean hard constraints, typically. There's another important class of problem, though, optimization problems. We want to find a solution which is optimal according to some objective function. Very often that means that we want to find a minimal cost solution. But we could also mean that we want to maximize the utility solution as well. In either case, minimizing cost or maximizing utility, these are both instances of optimizing an objective function. And these are known as optimization problems. Many problems though, are a mix of hard and soft constraints. And these are a very important class of problems that are quite interesting. We'll see an example next. So here's an interesting example of a problem that combines hard and soft constraints, also known as optimization under constraints or optimization under hard constraints. This is known as the corridor design problem. In the corridor design problem, we have existing habitat reserves for a species. In the pictures here, these habitat reserves are shown in green. And the species we're talking about in this case is the grizzly bear. And what we want to do in corridor design is we want to find a way of connecting these existing reserves in a way that, for example, minimizes the cost of having to purchase the parcels in the corridor. Alternatively, we want to maximize the utility, the suitability, for example, of the habitat for the grizzly bear. The utility of a residential parcel, for example, would have close to uh, zero or negative utility for a, a grizzly bear whereas a forested region on a hill might have very high utility for a grizzly bear. In any case, this is a great example of optimization under constraints. In this particular case, we want to maximize the utility of the corridor uh, without exceeding a fixed budget. We have a limited amount of money that we can spend. We can't spend any more on the parcels of the land. And so the cost represents the hard constraint in this particular problem. I've shown two examples here of um, the same land region but in one case, the parcels are quite large, and the solution that we find is rather coarse. If you have a finer grained mesh over the land mass, then you can find finer grained solutions, which is the case on the right. The solution on the right it came with much less purchase price cost, but nonetheless, it took a lot longer for computational algorithms to find the solution on the right. But for now, just understand the corridor design is a good example of optimization under constraints. So back to simple constraint satisfaction, hard constraint satisfaction. Scheduling activities are a great example of hard constraint satisfaction. So A represents the start time for some activity, B another activity, C yet another activity. The domains correspond to the possible start times, one, two, three, four in this simple example. The constraints in this case that activity A start before activity B, and activity B start before activity C. What we want to do is we want to find all the assignments of A, B, and C, or if you prefer, at least one assignment for A, B, and C that satisfies these constraints. We can do this by the kind of search that we've already studied. In this case, we have an initial state in which no variables have been assigned. The operators in this search framework uh, correspond to choosing an unassigned variable and then generating a child for each possible value assignment to that variable. When we do that repeatedly at each level, thus building up a search tree or search graph, we're going to encounter some states that violate constraints. Those states that violate at least one constraint are dead ends in this search space. So we begin at the start. At the left, you'll see B equals 1. That represents one child of the start state. And we follow that up with a choice of assignment of A. Turns out that all the children of the B equal 1 node left violate the constraint that A is less than B. They're all dead ends. Likewise, another dead end is if we were to choose B equals 3 off to the right, uh, and then we were to choose C equals 1, uh, that state this is towards the center of the graph. That state would violate the constraint B is less than C. B 
a equals 3, c equals 1, the constraint is violated. Goals in this framework correspond to the situation where all the variables, in this case a, b, and c, have been assigned with no violation of constraints. And so if you look at the case where b equals 3, down along the right, though not the far right, and then choose c equals 4, and then a equals 1. That path corresponds to a path that leads to a goal state. A equals 1, B equals 3, and C equals 4. None of the constraints are violated in that case. And so that's a goal state. And so we can adapt the various search methods to this problem of constraint satisfaction. We could adapt most any of the search methods that we've talked about earlier, both uninformed or blind search methods like depth first or breadth first search as well as heuristic methods to the solution of constraint satisfaction problems. Here's another example that you can try to solve through search. Very much like the earlier example, except we've got a couple more variables, D and E, and we've got more constraints. Um, some of these constraints, you'll note, are relationships between variables. A is not equal to B, B is not equal to C, C is less than D, just like we saw in the previous example. but. Some of these constraints are not relationships between two variables. B does not equal 3, C does not equal 2. Those are constraints on individual variables, much like we saw in the earlier video on machine learning and rotogravure printing, in which we had a machine learning system discover constraints on single variables. So you might go through this exercise, try and find some good rules of thumb for selecting variables at each search node as you expand the search tree. That would reduce the amount of work that a search algorithm would have to perform in order to solve the constraint satisfaction problem.